is August the 5th, I believe, August 6th, August 5th. This is 100% forgiven, exalting truth, no matter the cost. I am on a drive to my home, so I hope that you are able to hear me very well. If you're not, I apologize. I will eventually get back to my, what you call, professional equipment in recording these podcast episodes. Um, I hope that you've had a blessed week. I hope that you've had a good week. I know normally Monday, starting off in the beginning of the week, can be crazy for many people who have to wake up early, get their morning coffee going, and all that fun stuff. They have to dodge traffic. Sometimes they're late for work. Sometimes that can make us very mad. Um, But thanks be to God's grace that He covers us every day. Today I wanted to discuss having disagreements within the church. So from my church background, if any of you don't know this already, I come from the Restoration Movement, the Stone Campbell Movement. Those who began this were Alexander Campbell, Star, uh, Thomas Campbell, Barton Stone, um, and there's other people. But through this Restoration Movement, you have Christian churches, Disciples of Christ, and the Churches of Christ. I come from the hardline, what I call hardline churches of Christ. These people are genuine and wanting to do God's will. These people are want to be solely Bible-based, which is a great thing to want to do. However, the one that I come from believes that having musical instruments within your church gatherings is a sin. Now, when I became a Christian, I was a baby in Christ. Therefore, I was hungry. I was hungry for God's Word. Just as a mother supplies milk to their newborn baby, this church was supplying this doctrinal food to me. However, it took some time to realize that I was not given authentic food. I was given fake food, synthetic food. Food, spiritually, of course I'm speaking spiritually, I was giving, I was fed false doctrine. Now, I am in no way saying anything negative about the teachers, even though this is a false doctrine they're teaching. I had a close relationship with these people. They're God, they want to do God's will. This is nothing, in no way of me attacking their character personally. I believe these people sincerely want to do God's will. However, it is an unfortunate truth that they teach that having musical instruments in your church gatherings is a sin, and therefore any church who uses the musical instruments in their church gatherings, they are therefore sinning and are going to hell. They may not come out right and say it like that, but this is essentially what they're saying. How do I know this? Well, because I come from this line of thinking. I used to teach this. Not outright like that. I was never that blunt. But I used to teach this. I used to teach that musical instruments were sinful. And in fact, this was one issue that about split my wife and I up. I was determined to convert her to my views that musical instruments were sinful. It wasn't until I sincerely got down on my knees one night, prayed to the Lord, Lord, please open my eyes up about this. And I started to pay attention to the context of Scripture. I dropped all my preconceived ideas and assumptions I brought to certain parts of the Bible about that we use to defend our prohibition of musical instruments. And I began to see how off-base and how completely wrong I was in not only preaching this false doctrine that musical instruments and the church gatherings are sinful, but also how abhorrently wrong I was for not extending the hand of fellowship to those who use musical instruments. What do you do when your church has disagreements? And I'm not talking about disagreements over essential doctrines, such as you know faith in Jesus Christ, um, responding to God in the way that we're commanded to in the Scriptures. Um, the normal way of responding to God, to Christianity in the Scriptures, it doesn't stop at faith, even though you're justified at the moment of faith. You know, people still confess Christ. They 
you know, they, of course they repented. They had a change of mind, which is repentance, and they were baptized. You know, these are things we must all we need to all agree on. Um, but what do you do about secondary matters? What do you do about disagreements over things that the Bible doesn't even address? A couple weeks ago in a sermon I did, I quoted, I believe it was Thomas Campbell. He said, speak where the Bible speaks, be silent where the Bible's silent. Churches of Christ, they speak where the Bible speaks. However, many of them, I don't want to say all of them, many of them make laws and prohibitions in place of the silence of the Scriptures. So, in other words, they speak where the Bible speaks, but they create laws where the Bible's silent. What do you do when you have disagreements over secondary matters? Churches also disagree, over, specifically the Churches of Christ, they, they disagree over whether or not you should, you're should you allowed to use one cup during the Lord's Supper versus multiple cups during the Lord's Supper. Some churches disagree on who to have um, lead the lead the songs, lead the choir, lead the praise team. Do you withhold the hand of fellowship to those who you disagree with over matters such as this? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So what do you do? Do you just submit to the other person's belief? Their con- their convictions about secondary matters, for instance, for example, Churches of Christ teach, most of them do, that if you have musical instruments in your church gatherings, you're sinning. You must drop your belief that musical instruments are okay, or rather, maybe they wouldn't even say that, they would say, you need to get rid of them. And unless you do that, we cannot have fellowship. We cannot say that, you know, you are a brother and sister. Many Christians, many Churches of Christ are like this. They say, we who are using instruments are causing the division. Is that really the case, though? I testify that that's not the case. In fact, I testify that what's happening, what's wrongfully happening, is that people are wanting other people to submit to their conclusions and their beliefs about these secondary matters. It doesn't really matter if the person believes what the other believes or not. Regardless... They want them to submit to what they believe about this matter. They don't want them to rock the boat. They don't want them to ask questions. They don't want them to search these things out for themselves. They just want them to accept what they're taught and shut up. Because, and maybe, maybe that's a stretch. Maybe with someone's, maybe someone would say, Gary, that's not true. Okay, but what happened? Well, this is what happened from my experience. I started to question things. Some people actually got mad. They started to get upset. And unfortunately, this reminds me of Christian history. Back in the Roman days, the Roman Empire, the Catholic Church, when they were rising up, they wanted to control what their people believed. They had Bibles on chains. There were certain things that people were were and weren't allowed to read. This reminds me of Unfortunately, in many churches of Christ today. So what do you do over secondary matters? Well, you follow the principles given out in Romans 14. Romans 14, you have Christians disagreeing over diet, uh, whether or not to eat meat. Um, yeah, in 1 Corinthians 6, um, I believe it's 1 Corinthians 6, you have Christians disag- not disagreeing over whether to eat food that was sold in the market back in the Corinthian days. Food that had been sacrificed to idols. Some Christians thought it would it was wrong if you ate, let's say, a steak. Let's say you bought a steak in a market, and you were told that this steak was just sacrificed to um, to Buddha. Buddha is a known um, idol that many people know about. You just bought this steak that was sacrificed to Buddha for the glory of Buddha. Would you eat that steak? Would it bother your conscience? Some people it would. 
Some people it wouldn't because at the end of the day, there's only one one true God, and food's just food. Steak is just steak. The idols are nothing. God is God. But when we come to Romans 14 on disagreeing over secondary matters, we must realize that Paul, in that context, says, Who are you to judge the servant of another? God is able to make his servant stand or fall. Each of us will give an account to God for these secondary matters. However, for some reason, it is an unfortunate truth that many Christians want to condemn other Christians for using musical instruments in their church gatherings. Rather rather than accepting this as a genuine disagreement and extending the hand of fellowship to one another, they ignore, or in other words, they twist the meaning of Romans 14. They don't follow Romans 14. They don't they do not um, give liberty to their brother and sister on this matter. In other words, they make a law. They say, you must agree with us on this. It's unfortunate truth. So what do we do when we disagree over secondary matters? Again, I've asked that question like four times. We need to love one another. We need to build one another up. And we need to seek after the things of which edify the church, of which build up the church, and most importantly, which give glory to God. 1 Corinthians 14, 26, Christians were... Corinth was given, um, I would say, a list of instructions on how they were to conduct their worship service. But Paul gives a, a genuine... A, genu, a, genu, a general principle for them to follow. Let all things be done... For for the edification of the church. I believe that's Roman, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 26. I can't check because I'm driving. Romans 14, verse 19 says that we are to seek the things that build one another up. Hebrews 10, 23 to 25 says that we are to not neglect meeting with one another, but encourage, encourage one another daily as the day of the Lord draws near. We are to encourage one another to you know, do good works and good deeds. All in love. So, what do we do? Do we love one another? Do we respect one another? Do we stop trying to make people submit to our secondary, uh, our, our opinions on these secondary matters? And by doing this, we glorify Christ. In no way do you glorify Christ when you exclude Christians from being your brother and sister because they disagree with you or because you disagree with them over secondary matters that you think are essential to being saved, which is completely a whole nother talk in and of itself. That's a whole nother issue in and of itself. You accept one another, you love one another. By doing this, you glorify Christ. We must accept that we're not always going to agree on everything. Yes, agree on what the Bible says, but do not create laws in the places or where the Bible is silent. We're not going to always agree. That, is, that should be crystal clear throughout all Christian history. Yes, we should strive to be one in spirit to the best of our ability. But regardless, at the end of the day, we're not going to agree on every little thing. As it's been said before, you don't have to be... my. You don't have to... You don't have to agree with everything to be my brother. God bless you guys.